Hey, coming to you from Building Science Summer Camp. I'm actually in Joe's attic. We're in the barn next to his main house right over here. This is day one of the camp and look who I cornered, my buddy Gary Klein. Gary is an expert in hot water systems and how to deliver those efficiently. And he's actually been on one of my job sites in Austin to help me lay out a system. Gary, you've been published so many times. I've heard you speak. You've been in fine home building. Right. I highly recommend you look up Gary's articles. But Gary, for somebody watching this video, one of my one of my builder friends out there who doesn't know anything about hot water delivery, boil it down into the one minute version of why is this important to think about hot water layouts? It's important to think about hot water layouts because your customers get tired of waiting for hot water to arrive. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, as a builder, I think it's your responsibility to make sure that the customer's happy. Yeah. I didn't buy the house from the subs, I bought it from you, the builder. That's right. And that's what makes sense to me. So if I'm working with builders, I want them to answer one question. What's that? How long do you want your customers to wait for hot water to arrive? <laughs> the answer to that question allows me to help you design the plumbing to meet that goal. Yeah. So, uh, average house in America, how much time are they waiting for hot water and how much water is wasted down that, down that drain waiting for that water to get hot? Well, that's a really good question. It turns out that it's somewhere between the average house, mm -hmm. between a gallon and two gallons is wasted waiting for hot water to arrive, and the time is somewhere between one and two minutes. Wow. That is a lot okay. of water. You might be lucky. It could be 30 seconds. Yeah. But it could be five minutes because no one's paying attention to making sure it's better. Yep. Yep. My goal every time you turn on the tap is to waste no more than one cup in five seconds before the hot water gets there. Oh man, can you imagine that? You turn your hot water on and Gary's saying if, if we do this right, if we think about it, you'd have one cup of water wasted in no more than five seconds. That's incredible. That's always my goal. Now it turns out it's not always easy to get that goal, mm -hmm. but we can always get close. Yeah. And so we set realistic expectations. We work with the building team to do it. Builder, the architect, the structures, plumber, other subs that might be on the job, like framers that put things in the way of the plumbing, mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. We all have to work together as a team to make it work. Yeah, that makes sense. Gary, can you give uh, builders out there two or three pieces of advice on, uh, on getting there or what are the kind of the first steps to get there? you got to first answer the question of how long you want to wait. Okay. That tells us how long to make the branch lines, or what I like to call twigs, okay. that serve each fixture hot or cold water. It tells you how long the twigs can be. Got it. Um, once you know the answer to that, you then design the plumbing to connect all the bits up so that you have an efficient design. Most floor plants end up needing to have some form of circulation loop. And as you know, I like to specify demand activated loops because they're far and away the most energy efficient way of priming lines with hot water. Yeah, and I've, I've done, uh, I've been using the Metlin demand system now for probably 10 years or more, and I've done some videos on those. I'll, I'll link to that on, on the uh, description below for some info on that if you've not seen those. But uh, what if you don't want to do a demand system in the house or you don't have the budget for that? What's, what's, is, there a, uh, is there kind of a lesser ground to go to? In my opinion, no, but I'll help you anyway. Okay. <laughs> um, I think that the, the lesser ground is to put the plumbing in to be retrofit ready. Okay, there you go. The only marginal cost that I find in virtually every job mm -hmm. is the cost of the pump and controls. If you don't want to put that in at the time of construction and build it into the cost of the house and the mortgage, build, it, build the plumbing right so the consumer could make the choice to fix it for a few hundred dollars. All right, they could always add that they later They could always on. add it later on. Yeah. And But you have to make the plumbing right to begin with because that plumbing is going to be there for 50 to 100 years. Yeah. That decision is a very long-term decision. Mm -hmm. um, now, I have a nice story for you. There's a Habitat for Humanity home builder in Stockton, California. Mm -hmm. We spoke at a conference, I don't know, a couple years ago about hot water, and he said, that makes sense. He came back a year later with photographs. Two bathroom, one laundry room, one kitchen house. Furthest distance from the water heater to all plumbing fixtures was 12 feet. Oh my gosh, wow. 12 feet, that's incredible. A so pipe, not length. So basically, pipe. he centrally located that in such a, a well-designed house that in all directions, it was 12 feet of pipe to the furthest fixture. Yes. No pump pipe. needed there. No, no pump needed. <laughs> so. Now, I would observe that if you're willing to rethink the layout of housing, 
you could get compact plumbing cores. Mm -hmm. And if you can get a compact plumbing core with the water heater in the center of the core, yep. you might not need any pumps. That's pretty incredible. But even if you did, you'd save money on the hot water, you'd mm -hmm. save money on the cold water, and you'd save money on the drain and vent stacks because there'd only be one of them and they'd be small. That's incredible. So what's wrong with this picture? It costs you less to build a better house. Mm -hmm. I'm confused, why don't we do that? <laughs> That's awesome, Gary. So you could you could give a shout out to your builders. If anybody builds one, we'll give them an award. I love it, that'd be fantastic. Hey Gary, let me ask you a couple of random questions. Um, you know, 15 years ago when I first started hearing about green building and thinking about not wasting water as you're waiting, waiting for hot to come, I, I thought at that time that the best system out there uh, was a, uh, 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 gosh, what's the term for it? A, uh, basically a, a uh, manifold system. Home run manifold? A home yeah. run manifold. Uh -huh. And uh, I put a couple of those in some houses I build. I liked the idea of being able to shut off individually a run, right. but I found that it, that it was really hard to deliver quick hot water in that way. And it was also incredibly hard to retrofit a pump in a house like that. Mm -hmm. What's your take on manifold systems versus a trunk and branch? Manifold systems do exactly what you've described. The trick is this. Imagine you have a one quart plumbing system, mm -hmm. which means all paths from the water heater to the fixture are no more than one quart long. Wow. Okay? It doesn't matter exact lengths or things, it's a volume problem no matter right. what we did. Right. You can have a short trunk, long twig, mm -hmm. or a long trunk, short twig configuration. Makes sense. Imagine your master bathroom in this configuration at morning rush hour. Mm -hmm. You get up, you turn on the shower, you get done with the shower, you go to your sink, someone takes your place in the shower, they get out of the shower, they go to their sink. Does that sound like morning rush hour? Makes sense. If you have a long trunk, short twigs, you have one shower, mm -hmm. so a long trunk and a short twig, so that would be one quart for the first half. Yep. And then by definition in the design, each twig was one cup. Mm -hmm. So I'd have one quart plus two cups of at, at, six cups total waste of water plus a little bit more for heating up the pipe. Mm -hmm. If I have a manifold system, which is the short trunk long twig configuration, the trunk is only a cup long right. and each twig is three cups. So the first one is still a quart, right? Mm -hmm. But the second event is three cups right. and the third event is three, three cups. cups. So I'm six plus six plus four, that's what, uh, 16 cups? Yeah. That you're um, wasting that's it. a gallon yeah. instead of less than a half a gallon. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. That's why they don't work well. Yeah, that's a big difference. And we specified that they're all equal paths. Right, right. And not very big ones. Yeah. It just gets worser in bigger buildings. Worser yeah, is a technical true. term. <laughs> worser, I like that. It's getting worse at an exponential rate. That's what worser is. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Gary, tell me, uh, let me ask you a semi-related question. You're an expert on hot water, not necessarily hot water heaters or brands. Um, but you know, I love talking about hot water heaters on my, on my blog. I love talking about efficiency. You want to know why they're hot water heaters? I thought they were cold water heaters. <laughs> True, cold water heaters. Sorry. <laughs> I get confused. So tell me, uh, in your experience, um, give me uh, a couple of your favorite configurations, tank versus tankless, electric, heat pump electric. What, what do you like out there in the marketplace? Give me a couple things that you, that you find as particularly efficient or reliable or long lasting or really good systems. Yeah, that's a tough one. That is a hard one. Um, I actually don't think we yet make what consumers want. Hmm. Uh, as you may recall, I've interviewed almost 50,000 consumers about their hot water use in the last 20 something years. Mm -hmm. um, I've been busy. And you I have typically been. talk to a couple thousand people a year and I'm on my 25th year, so it's on the order of 50,000 people. Dang. And what customers tell me they want is hot water now and never run out of their shower. Mm -hmm. In order to get hot water now, oh, there's a third thing. They'd like a parental control switch for their teenager shower. <laughs> um, and they've wanted that for a long time, and I'm pretty sure we could sell water heaters, the, the parental control switch for more than the water heater. Yeah, that's probably true. Um, so what we want in the system is to, to never run out needs a certain heat rate and a certain volume. Mm -hmm. And it's really the business shower. It's the one getting ready for work and school, that kind of stuff is the one that people worry about. Yeah. If you want hot water now, two things must be true. You need a source of hot water before you turn on the tap, 
and it needs to be close to where you want it. Mm -hmm. Those two things are called instantaneousness, hot water now, and yep. continuous never continuousness never run out of my shower. Yep. All right. It turns out that if you go to a really small volume, as in traditional tankless, you have to modulate very heavily in order to get down to low flows and small temperatures to rise. Yep. They don't do that well. Yeah. 10, 15 to 1 modulation is tough. Yeah. And it's expensive and the controls are finicky and it, it doesn't do as well as it, you'd like. It works okay, but there's some point that some of your early tankless customers were having trouble taking showers. Because, mm -hmm. you know, where you live in Austin, it's sometimes warm in the summer. Oh, yeah, we have 60 degree inlet temps often. Yeah, and so they ended up, the bottom end of the burner was too big and it would overheat the water and it would shut off in the middle mm -hmm. of your shower. Yeah. What are you supposed to do? Go turn on the faucet while you're taking a shower. Yeah, and waste some more water. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's confusing to the people who bought the tankless water here. <laughs> so, Okay, that's the strategy of the continuousness. Um, you need a burner that's a certain size. Well, I could give you a really small tank and a really big burner, or I could give you a really small burner and a really big tank, like a candle in a thousand gallons. Yep. Who cares what the heat rate is? You don't, you'll never see it. Right. Okay, somewhere in the middle is what we're looking for. Mm. So what you want to do is to reduce complexity of controls and, and increase capacity. Yeah. So it turns out that one shower, the hot water for one shower, typically takes about 60 to 80,000 BTUs per hour. Okay. Sort of depends where you are in the country. You need 80 to 120,000 to handle two showers or a sink and a shower, somewhere in that range. I don't need 200,000 BTUs, but I need that 60 to 80 for sure. What if I had a water heater with a 20 gallon tank, 25 gallon tank for peakiness mm -hmm. and some overlapping, right? And an 80,000 burner. Thank you. Yeah. Somebody just made one. Is that right? Yes. Wow. What are the major manufacturers? Uh, one of the better known niche manufacturers. Awesome. It's sweet. So, and by the way, it looks like R2D2. Does it I wanted, really? I wanted to do a deal with Disney. <laughs> That's fantastic. So, the model that I've been using the most, probably in my houses over the last 10 years, has been gas around 100,000 BTUs and 50 gallons. Right. You know, even with a big family, you have a hard time draining a 50 gallon, 100,000 BTU tank. They and, seem and to be a little bit more reliable. There's less cleaning in my hard water scale areas of Austin. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, yeah. in, in my hot water heater that's tankless at my house, I flush that sucker every 12 months yeah. because yeah, that thing to. scales up big time on me. So the scaling has to do with the surface area to heat to temperature ratio. Mm -hmm. Your tankless has really tiny volume. Surface area. Yeah, small surface area compared and very high heat. Yep. The, 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 the larger capacity unit you're describing has a very large surface area so that the temperature at the surface is not as hot and therefore right. doesn't cause the precipitation. Right. Um, the, uh, there is a new tankless version, I hate to use that word because it's got a three gallon tank, hmm. but it's got enough onboard storage to modulate right. Interesting. Both of these are gas. I think they are really interesting electric solutions. Um, the best electric solution I can see from an efficiency point of view is to take a heat pump water heater, mm -hmm. air source heat pump if that's appropriate for your climate, and run it in heat pump only mode. Yeah. On the output, add a small electric tankless to do a topping off cycle. Okay. You'll doesn't need to be particularly large, and you can probably interconnect it with the same wiring for the the, the heat pump water heater. Yep. Um, so you wouldn't have to double duty the wiring, but you just have an interconnect that only one or the other operates. Got it. Um, that would effectively double the volume of output of the tank. Two fifty gallon tanks. Let's say now you got a hundred gallons. Uh, and you yeah. do a super efficient electric tank, like a marathon. Oh no, electric tankless. You don't even need to do two oh, tanks. Oh, electric tankless. Interesting. But the heat pump does the bulk of the work, and all you do is top off what comes uh, out. Okay, so if it's at 80, it's just topping it off to 110. It'll or never get to 80. To be. Yeah, what'll happen is it'll never get to 80. It'll always be above that, or? Well, here's something that was explained to me. When you're running out, the temperature in the water heater is 104, mm -hmm. or 103, or 102 uh, and 100. So it's barely it's, topping off. It's barely topping off because you're uncomfortable at that point and you want to get out. So you only have to make up a very little difference to get finished with your shower. Wow. Then the heat pump takes over. That's incredible. I never thought about that before. It's a very clever idea. How many kW would you need for that electric uh, resistance uh, 
I think the Tangles. wire. I think the wiring allows you to put on somewhere around seven kW without having to go to different wiring. Gotcha. And so, so it's got plenty of power. It's got plenty, plenty of capacity. So even if you're running three showers and that water was coming in 105, it could top it up to 120 or whatever you're. Not to for get very to. long, but yes. Yeah. You basically it takes 10, 10 kW per gallon per minute with a 70 degree temperature rise. That's incredible. I never thought about that before. That's and really on the, cool. On the gas side, it's around 40,000 BTUs per hour. Has We're, anyone installed one of those before that you know of? Yeah, a couple of manufacturers are working together now to produce product that looks like that. In fact, I just saw an article by uh, another well-known person, John Siegenthaler, uh, on hot water system design showing exactly that in the drawing. Wow, that's really Topic cool. Cycle. That's it makes awesome. sense. It's a very clever idea that's very simple to implement. That is clever. I've never heard of that before. That's yeah. awesome. Gary, thanks for being on with me today. You bet. Um, for somebody watching this video who doesn't know you and wants to catch up with your work or see you, what's the best way to... Uh, find out where, Gary, where in the world is Gary Klein. Look at GaryKleinAndAssociates.com. Okay. Um, I'm speaking at Passive House and at EBA this fall. Awesome. Uh, Are you going to the EBA conference in Dallas? I am. Great. I'll be there too. Yeah, it'll be great. great. Look forward to seeing so, you. So uh, come to EBA in September in Dallas. Gary will be speaking in, and I've got the closing cool. keynote. That'll be fun. And, uh, and you can also, I would highly recommend catching up on some of Gary's articles in fine, fine Home Building. If you're not a member of the online, join, and then you can get all the past articles that Gary's written on finehomebuilding.com. That's a great way to get caught up before you see him speak. Yep. And then you can do what I've done over the years, which is when you see him at an event like this, go, hey, Gary, I got a question, or I'm building this house, and here's, the, here's what I've got going on. Or even better, you can pay him to do a design for you. Uh, he's got a, a whole team of people that can uh, give you some hot water design. Thanks, Gary. Appreciate it. We'll see you later from Building Science Summer Camp.